Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new camp build. So today we are just around the corner from White Springs, I'll show you where in just a moment. And this build is partly inspired by the last build in my recent Through the Keyhole episode, the first episode of that new series. That was also in this location and I like the way it used the trees as part of the build or the atmosphere they gave to the build. So I thought we'd build something with a kind of garden in the middle of it. So this is where we are on the map, you can see we're not far from the White Springs, just here. Quite a popular area this, you find a lot of people building this area because it's nice and central, it's easy to find and with player vending people can move around the area what between a few camps quite easily. So, we'll start off with the central feature of the build, it's the kind of garden area and it's going to be focused on this tree here, I wanted to incorporate that inside the building of the house I suppose and uh, build out from there. So we're going to build a little foundation around this with an open area in the middle. At the moment this is actually working out a little on the small side. But uh, this tree, and there's actually another one just like it a little further back, you can't actually bulldoze. So either way you're going to have to work around them if you're in this location. Let's see from our starting position here, the foundations are a little on the low side, so we're going to have to move those up a bit. Take this corner one off. Uh, the easiest point to start from on the lowest side. Snap a ramp in there and just lift it up and snap two. Now, if you're not bothered about how high it is, which realistically I wasn't here, I just wanted to try this technique, then you can just move it up using the select and hold option, using the uh, whatever your select piece button may be. But if you use the ramp, it'll allow you to move it specifically one half height wall up, just as I did there, which is a dead easy way of doing it. In this case it works quite nicely. As you can see here, I'm a little too far over. This rock edge here is getting in the way. A little bit of an issue there. You have to faff a bit and then lights change. <laughs> so, we're going to lift things up, work our way around. There we go. See, it's still a little too far over, so we're going to have to move a little closer to the edge of the cliff here. Nice little overlook on White Springs in that corner there. So, put an extra layer on on the left here, and we're going to shift the right hand edge across one. So, I needed at least four foundation squares in the uh, middle there for this garden area, otherwise it's just so small it's not really going to work. Fortunately, they, since you can now place foundations in a manner that float, as long as your first one doesn't, it then means you can't move them sometimes. It's much like moving an upper floor. But, finding the one that is floating and working out from there does work, so solved. Got the whole thing moved over a bit. I still want it sticking out back a little bit, so we're going to go around the corner there. A couple of stairs in. You can see I've gone for two levels here on the, the build. It will ultimately be three. Uh, breaks up the shape and keeps the thing a little more dynamic looking, so that was the goal. I also wanted to use mixed materials, so the top half have got the barn pieces, which I picked up a couple of weeks ago but haven't used yet. On the lower half I'm going to use the brick. I actually do use some of the basic wood panels as well, so got quite the mixed mixed texture of effort here. There we go, we're going to expand this corner out as well because at the moment we've got corridors and I want some actual rooms in here. There we go. It's going to be our little crafting area. There's walls in, nice and easy. That is the basic floor plan of the building in place a few more changes. So we can start putting in an upstairs area. Don't worry too much about the fences I put in there, those will be changing. I did originally try and go around the corner a little bit here, but as you can see there, but uh, you won't be able to get upstairs if you do that, so that had to change. Now initially I tried the internal staircase for this, but it caused a load of problems with attaching walls. For some reason they didn't want to attach onto the edge of the staircase on the inside. If you had a wall underneath it would, but I didn't at the time, so it was a no-go. For now we're going to get the walls up. Some super meters coming in in the corner to hassle the base. Actually, this base did have a few issues in the building as regards getting attacked. I've got super mutants there. During the course of building it, I actually got attacked by three scorch beasts, two of them at the same time, and a mothman. And then I got attacked by another scorch beast and a sheep squatch while I was running out looking for wood as well. It was quite frustrating. <laughs> It went fine, but uh, 
I was starting to think there was some kind of Fallout 76 conspiracy against my building going on here. There we go. So we have an upper floor in. This is basically where this top level is going to go. It's going to be our kind of bedroom, apartment, somewhere in between the two. So the lower level is going to be a crafting space and a bar. And speaking of a bar, I've got a little problem there with the staircase being where it is and nothing to support the wall. So speaking of a bar, one of the other builds I've seen in this location was Ice Stellas. She did a tavern right here. And I think that makes for an interesting thing to look at as well as the other build I mentioned earlier because it's interesting to see how, despite the fact we've got three builds in exactly the same location, it completely changes up how the area looks. So I'll throw links to my video and to Stella's as well on cards, so if you want to go check those out, it's interesting to see how different an area can become. Getting a roof in, nice and simple. That one corner that's going to be a bit of an issue, but I want to change this up a bit, so we're going to pull this wall out. The triangle one in there, if I can find it. There we go. I'm going to put an angled roof over the stairs here. Okay, it breaks up that form factor a little bit more. Back over to the corner. Before I put this last bit of the roof in, I want it to look supported on this edge. And as if I haven't got walls to do that, and I don't want walls either, we're going to use some pillars under the stairs tab. But they'll only snap to floors, they won't snap to roofs, so and they won't snap to the edge of the foundation in the right place either. So. I'm going to put the floor in, put the half one in, sticking out over the edge so that I can snap it onto the corner there. Fortunately the fences are getting in the way. Pull those out. Yeah, you can see it's not quite working. Pull those out. Looking at the floor above, we could snap it to that rather than the one below. Now we're in the corner. Let's it back in, even though I'm not going to use them. Snap a roof on, now it appears supported. I just need one more angled one over here. I had wanted to do something a bit more angular where those tra uh, pointy roofs, for want of a better way of putting it, are. But nothing quite worked, didn't cooperate. The only one that would have worked would be to have a kind of V shape. But uh, didn't look right, to be honest. So that idea got scrapped. I'm going to repeat the same thing over on this side, over the other staircase. Another angled roof. Yeah. Although I can put a roof on there. I haven't got a post in the corner. See the tree is starting to become a more integral part of the build though, or more characterful part now it's surrounded by a reef. Quickly pull these back out again, stick another staircase in. Flat out so it's out of the way. Get the floor on. Half floor, you can use the large ones, but I already had a half one stored, so. Stick that on the edge, so that the centre of the half floor is on the corner where I want it. Snap to that, and put the railings back in. Roof back on, and there we go. We've got most of the roof in place, for this lower section anyway. So we've got a problem here though, I can't put a wall there with the staircase here and nothing underneath to support it. So we're going to nudge that over one, put the staircase by the wall. And drop the floors in. Those will now support the upper wall. Fortunately, we still end up with the bottom edge of this roof clipping through, which is... It's a little frustrating to me, that, but it is what it is. I don't actually want a window here, because we're not going to be able to see out into the garden. In the end, I think I took the windows out altogether, because I put... Um, just It worked better when it came to furnishing it, but... I did want to be able to see the garden from upstairs as well, but, as I say, I needed a blank wall in order to have... A more appropriate place to put the furniture, so that does get changed. So, changed my mind on fencing this garden off. I wanted it to feel a little bit more enclosed within the build. So, we're going to put walls around the lower half. Actually, swap these out for stone ones on the edge here. The end. There we go. A couple of barn ones at the top to match the top section. The ones plugged up. So we're going to change them out for the brick ones, so it's just a little more in keeping with the rest of the build. Lower floor. For now, I'm just put a few windows in. Use the uh, replace feature. Nice and easy. So basically the idea here was to put the windows in positions where they were effective, but at the same time kind of interesting. So we've got them on the corner. This one's actually going to change out in a second. There we go. I'm going to have them on the two corners here, and beside the stairs, overlooking the top half of the garden, 
we're going to have windows both on the outside and inside so effectively light could come all the way from the outside I don't know why I'm gesturing right now but all the way from the outside as you can see there through into the centre of the building as well as through the roof get some roofs on upstairs and we'll have a look at the area that we're going to put our player vending in take just a moment there corners on, keep the shape a bit more interesting I actually end up expanding this area out just to the left of where we are now there's a corner at the top of the stairs and it made the whole upper level just one floor piece wide I wanted a bit more space up there so I just pushed it out for now, jump outside, we're going to put a little balcony that's going to be our player vending area but this corner here is where the upper floor inside will eventually sort of reach out over the top of Fine, because I want a roof over this area anyway. Gone one too far there, though it does work, there's way too much floating going on, so that, that won't do. Bit of a shutdown getting in the way as well there. Well, back off, stick one more floor piece in here, make it a little bit easier to just walk from the surface of the game onto the build, built surface, I should say. Stick some railings around the edge of this. Fortunately, because they're very, very temperamental, this gate won't snap, but I am able to just place it in anyway and still snap everything on the side, so no problem there. Alert after alert at this point. <laughs> so I wanted a roof over this area, but I haven't yet put the little extension on the top floor. But I can't snap it to the outside of the walls. They're designed to go over the inside of your building, not the outside, so I'm going to put an extra wall on here as a starting point. Connect the roofs on there. And I've run out of build budget. Sorted. <laughs> now we take the wall off and the other ones will now support it. There we go. So I want a post to support the outer edge. So again, staircase. A couple of floor pieces. A little bit awkward about snapping there. So take the corner one off just to be a bit... Persuade it a little bit more. There we go. Wants to do it from down here. Sometimes getting a bit further away and standing below where you want to snap things is the easiest way by far to get them to play ball. There we go, get that snapped on. We'll extend it out along the edge, so I've got another one for this corner. There we go. Again, having build budget issues, but we'll fix those easily enough. Posts on the corner. I'm often not too fussed about whether or not the posts are actually on the corner. I know a lot of people think it looks silly when they're not, but... I think it really depends on what you're doing. In this case, it would look silly if they're not in the corner, however, so why are we doing all this? Get the roof back on. So, with the exception of that extension in the back corner you'll see in a minute, the build is done, so let's have a look at a decorated tour. Relatively simple build. Uh, a lot of them are in Fallout 76, but it's all about working with the tools you've got to make it creative. Got some nice welcoming signs for anybody who wants to stop by. Decided to embrace the uh, cardboard stand out, standy Pip Boy meta for directing people to my little uh, trading area. Currently got everything switched off, trying to avoid getting uh, interrupted. Fortunately, somebody does drop by when I do the nighttime tour, but don't cause a problem. So, also labelled up and separated out all the things I'm selling, so you can find what you're looking for much more easily. Head on round. As you can see over the door, I've put a little sign saying please close the doors. It doesn't work. There we go. <laughs> I think we need to, as a community and as a group, embrace closing doors behind us. Subject close to my heart. <laughs> as you can see, I've changed out the railings around this top half and I've swapped the lower walls out for brick ones and put some uh, barn triangles on the top of them. A little bar area in here. Go for the new atom shop clean bar from the White Springs and some clean furniture to go with it. So I swapped those railings out, I was going to say, because the original ones I was using, much as I like them, they're a little too tall and you can't really see down into the garden from up here in the way I wanted. So the lower ones it needed to be. Come down, that's our obligatory Nuka-Cola posters into our little crafting area. Little look around the garden. Unfortunately, a little limited in our plant options, so it's a combination of crops and potted plants, but it works. 
A few of the succulents from the atomic shop there on the staircase as well. Oh. Our mole miner stash box under the stairs. Now back here we've got a little bit of extra space. I decided to put a little bit of an adhesive farm and my water purifiers out here. I'm actually right on the build budget here, so if I uh, wanted to put any more, I'd have to start removing some furnishings, which is a little unfortunate, but you got to do what you got to do, stretch it to the limit. I'm going to head on upstairs. Not too happy with the fact this door opens outward, but the doors that I can use that will open inward don't fit quite, so you know, they don't look right, so sacrifices have to be made. Gone for the orange shag carpet, which... A little low res, but it's different and sort of warm and homey, so that's why I went for that one. Piano in the corner. So as we look back around, you'll see at the top of the stairs there, that corner where it sticks out in front of us. That's where I extended it over the top of the player vending area below, just because it was feeling a little cramped up here. So that gives us a little bit more space to work with. That still works with the lower level having a, a roof over it as well. So we'll head back on out. See, so we've got the uh, Wild Appalachia quest posters on the wall there as well. Remains of a super mutant who decided to uh, attack my base. And we'll take a look around this place in the night time. Not so subtle hint there. <laughs> so to be fair, this gate could easily be removed because everybody, and I mean everybody including me, literally just comes running down here, hops over the fence and onto the... Uh, um, balcony there. Unfortunately, that front fence also gets attacked a lot. It tends to get destroyed, which is a little frustrating. I haven't got the budget left over to put turrets over the top of my player vending area, which would be very handy to have, but this is what it is. Come out and whack things with an axe when I need to. Got an oil lamp out front. There we go. I've used a cycling light down here because I wanted to use an orange light to keep the warm vibe going that I've got with the oil lamp out front. And it works quite well. It allows me to have an electric light that takes up a bit less room and actually hangs from the ceiling rather than being stuck in the middle on the floor. It does have to be directly wired, which is a little unfortunate, but it allows me to get the right colour, which is cool. Moving on in. Again, the lights over the posters also give us that nice warming glow, which is cool. Around the garden, a couple of lanterns just tucked in amongst the plants there to illuminate it a bit better. It's a life a bit. Gone for an exception to the warming light in a couple of areas. The power armor station's got a spotlight on the ceiling pointed at it. That just allows you to see what you're doing a bit better, and because it's a work environment rather than a homeliness environment for want of a better way of putting it. I've gone for a, a clean white light for that. Same up here in the bar, we've gone for the twinkling lights at the top. A couple of spotlights on the floor which I'd like to hide but needed to illuminate the Deathclaw statues. There we go, there's a little garden area. I would like something on those wooden sections at the top but windows as I say weren't quite right and I'd out build budget anyway so bar area behind us, head back down, take a little look outside and head back upstairs again and see how that looks in the evening as well. These wooden doors are from the atomic shop as well, they're the country wooden doors. A little bit cleaner, a little bit more solid than most of the offerings added by game per se. Find the plans for. There we go, nice and simple. Connected a little power conduit to the tree as well to route the wires which is Mostly just done for the aesthetics of it. Somebody left my door open. Not sure whether or not that was me. <laughs> Again, we've gone for candles and lanterns up here. It's adjusted things a little bit in here because it's a bit dark. So the candles are nice, but they don't put out quite as much light as I'd like. But it's effective. It's warming. A little cosy place to retreat to. Get stuck on the door. <laughs> We'll make our way back out. So, I do hope you enjoyed that. If you did, do hit those buttons for me. It's always very, very much appreciated. Social media links down below as well if you want to catch up with me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. 
And if you'd like to, do stop by and catch one of the live streams. We're having a lot of fun playing Fallout at the moment, and a bit of Rage 2 as well. And we've also recently launched channel memberships, so if you're interested in supporting the channel a little bit more directly, you can click on the Join button and consider helping me out a little more that way as well. It's very, very much appreciated. If you want a little bit more information, that's available down in the description as well. For now, I'll say thank you very much for watching. I will be speaking to you all very, very soon.